Oh, gold. Oh, that's a lovely colour, isn't it? Oh, look. Oh, oh Come that's... Go on through. Oh, oh my goodness. Hello, darlings. The kitchen renovation is finally here. I'm so sorry it's taken me so long. And by the time that I am filming this intro, I've already made the community post saying that the video is going to be delayed. Honestly, it was a whole process. I thought the kitchen renovation was going to take me three days and it took me a week and a little bit more. So I'm so sorry, but thank you all for being so, so patient. So for this video, you're gonna see from start to finish how the kitchen changes from blank white walls to what it is now. Um, and I'm so happy with the change and it looks amazing and it's so much more practical than it was before. Also a quick note, towards the end of the week, I didn't film as much face to face because I was getting really stressed out. I had a deadline to finish the kitchen and I had all of these finishing touches that I wanted to do. Like I was half finished stuff and I didn't have everything. I was really stressed out and we had family coming over. So that's why the video has been pushed back. A little fun fact, I love renovating videos, but pretty much every single renovating video that there is, is never to my standards because I love vintage. And unfortunately, most renovating videos, they turn a beautiful old room or a house or a kitchen from something like from the 1950s and they turn it into something that is not very nice. And personally, I'm just sick of seeing renovating videos where they just paint everything white or white and black. <laughs> and um, it lacks all of that character that a beautiful old home can have. Our kitchen had a little bit of character beforehand, but it was very simple and plain. So this house was built in the post-war period, so late 40s, early 50s. And the kitchen has been renovated since then. James's grandma did it in the 1970s, sometime around there. It was just very simple. So we've gone in and spiced it up a little bit and made it look really lovely and brought back a little bit of flair that maybe it would have in the 1940s and 50s. So yes, I hope you enjoy this whole vintage kitchen renovation process. So without further ado, let's get into it. I've just woke up. I had a ridiculously late night because I had to have a video ready because I had a sponsorship integration. So I had to have that ready ahead of time before my upload. And yes, I just spent way too long on it <laughs> to the early, early hours of the morning. Um, and it's midday now. Today I was meant to get up really early and um, start on the kitchen renovation. I'm gonna try and do it in three days. Um, and now my first day is, is half done. So we're gonna go to the hardware store and get all the things that we need. And then also to the fabric store so that I can get my fabric for the curtains for the kitchen. Um, and I think that that'll be it for day one. Day two, we're really gonna get into things. So yeah, let's get, let's get on with the day. So this is our kitchen. It was last renovated in the 1970s and is quite plain and bare. There was so much white space on the walls that I just had to do something about it. I had started drawing kitchen mock-ups about midway through the year and it wasn't until November that we actually started the renovations. I had so many ideas and different directions I wanted to go with the kitchen and I actually ended up confusing myself a lot while drawing up and planning for the kitchen makeover. To better understand what colours would go best in the kitchen together, I coloured my own swatches until I found the best option which ended up being pink, green and the natural brown of the timber cupboards. The wallpaper I ended up choosing was vintage from the 1950s and I couldn't be happier with my choice. I love it. I was originally looking at a modern wallpaper in a vintage style, but I just didn't like any of the patterns that were available online and nothing seemed to suit the kitchen. So I ended up doing a lot of research until I found the perfect vintage wallpaper in a pattern that I love. That's the one side of the kitchen with the stove and everything. And then on the other side of the kitchen, we have just a huge wall. The ceilings are really tall in this house. So we had to figure out what are we gonna put on this wall? So I was kind of playing around with maybe frames and a phone and maybe some hooks to hang my aprons. And then I drew up another little design that I had some shelving in the middle and then some jello molds. So I eventually came up with this design in August and I bought my shelf. So I knew that that was gonna go perfectly on the wall. And then I wanted to do these other shelves here. So in August, I had my final design for the wall. 
and I hadn't figured out the other wall but I was pretty certain about my placement for this wall and my colours and I was pretty much ready to go ahead. I had written down absolutely everything we needed from the hardware store and I had my paint swatches to bring with me too. I tried to make sure to match the green paint as best I could with the green in the wallpaper. At this point I was 99% certain I was going to be painting one wall green, but I did match the pink paint swatch just in case I changed my mind and wanted to paint a pink wall instead. We stopped on the way for a quick coffee and then made our way into Bunnings. After picking up everything we needed from the hardware store, we headed on home because it was already getting into the late evening and we were running out of daylight. Alright, I'm going to be washing the walls now and I've got my bucket here with warm water and a little bit of detergent. Because it is the kitchen, there's going to be a little bit of grease, not really on this wall, but above the stove. I Actually, I definitely know there's grease on there, you can see it, <laughs> you can see it in the light sometimes. Also, on another note, when we film, we usually turn off the fridge because it sounds like a car turning on. <laughs> it's really loud and I've got to turn it off, but I will. And then tomorrow we'll have lovely clean walls. We can start doing the wallpaper and maybe start painting the wall as well. Let's be honest, this is gonna be really boring. So this will probably be a time lapse. And of course I was dancing and singing along to Taylor Swift. I'm just having my breakfast at the moment. We're having more of an early start than yesterday. So we're gonna get a lot of things done. I have my green paint here, which is the exact same color that's in the wallpaper. So I made sure to match that green swatch with the wallpaper. So we have the perfect color or close to perfect. And that's going to go on the big wall in the kitchen. I also have some cream paint and that's for little finishes. So like the trims, just going over those because they've been a bit beaten up with the vacuum cleaner over the years. There's also a strip underneath the cabinets, which is like, I don't know what sort of board it is, but it's not like timber. It's, it's like this particle board. That's maybe what it is. And as I said about the vacuum cleaner, it's been smashed up over the years. And it's all falling apart. So I'm obviously not going to rip anything out. I'm not that much of a master renovator. So I think I'm going to go in with some putty and seal all of that up and then give it a fresh coat of paint. So that's what's on the agenda for today. Let's get into it. Since there were really big gaps between the skirting board and the wall, we went ahead and filled it in with the caulking gun. I had never done caulking before and let me tell you, it is so satisfying smoothing it over with your finger. I don't know why it is, but it was just so fun. So for your viewing pleasure, here is a caulking montage. We had a cup of tea and then got straight into painting the wall green.
Is it? Yeah, babe, I promise you won't look like Shrek green. Um, what? Oh, Shrek green? <laughs> Why did you pick this color? Because it matches the wallpaper. I started thinking, oh gosh, I've picked the wrong color. But it was okay once we started filling in the wall with the paint. I felt a lot better about my choice and it started to look really, really lovely and vibrant. While the first coat of paint on the wall was drying, I got straight into filling the cracks and peeling paint under the cupboards. To protect the floor, I put down some blue painter's tape and then started slapping on some putty, but I did make sure to smooth it over as best as possible. James got started on the second coat of paint while I did the putty, and once the putty dried, the plan was to sand it back so it's nice and smooth before painting over the top. We had a bit of a situation, um, the tin of paint got knocked over and <laughs> fell all over the ground, but luckily it was on the towel. Oh my gosh. We're about to paint over the door at the moment, and something that's really cool is there are some little green markings on the door that have accidentally been knocked, and so I reckon the door was green before this, which is really cool. And before painting the door, I made sure to fill in those little markings so that we had an even coat of paint over the top. I bought this lovely timber shelf a couple of months before doing the kitchen and I knew it was going to go perfectly on this wall above the stove so we had to make sure to place it in the exact spot that we had studs behind so this wall was a little bit confusing to work with because there weren't a lot of timber studs behind the wall so we had to be really careful and make sure that we got it spot on. Woo! That was thrilling, we should have put that on camera. Oh! You started recording! Yeah, I got it <laughs> After we sorted out the placement for the shelf and drilled the holes into the wall, I then started working on the doorknob and the door. So these door handles are original to the house, so from the 1940s. And they are very plain, they're not very extravagant, but I do really like them. And I decided to paint over the handle because there was a lot of paint that was already on there from before, and I didn't really want to remove all of that. I just thought it was too big of a job and it would look nice white. And then we just went ahead and painted the door and off white. Because I wanted to paint the skirting boards, I laid down some painter's tape. The skirting boards had been pretty damaged over the years. Paint was coming away, so I knew I needed to give it a fresh coat of paint. Once the little trim under the cupboards was sanded, I then went ahead and painted that with the same off-white that I used for the door and the other trims in the room. Because it was kind of an awkward job crouching over, I decided that the best way to do the job was to just lie on the floor and paint that way. It actually was pretty comfortable just having a bit of a snooze and painting along the trim. It's day two for the renovating for the kitchen and we're going to try and get through a lot today but I realized I'm not sure whether I explained everything that I'm planning to do for the kitchen. So we painted this wall because the wallpaper that I got for this wall here which is above the stove and the countertops is a vintage wallpaper which means that it's a bit more expensive than a regular like mass produced wallpaper. When I was researching online for doing the kitchen, I just couldn't find any modern wallpapers that I liked. It's a little bit more expensive, but I thought it's gonna look so nice in the kitchen, but I'm not gonna put it across both of the walls because this wall here is actually very high. I haven't actually measured it, but it's like we have very high ceilings. It would be too much money to try and wallpaper all of that and wallpaper that. So we're just doing one green paint on the other. So we're gonna wallpaper this wall today, stick up the shelf, and we're also gonna go get some shelves from Ikea because we just want a flat shelf with a little beam underneath so that we can hang our pots and pans on. 
and we're going to cover these countertops so they're not going to be white anymore we're going to be putting on some adhesive paper which is pink that's going to tie in with the wallpaper with the whole kitchen i'm trying to combine lots of different aspects of colors to make it really flow and look cute and then we've got to do a little bit more painting we've got to go in and paint the trims again and the door i think we need to do a third coat of paint because it's still looking a little bit patchy we accidentally took off a little bit of paint there but we're going to go ahead and do this door again with a third coat um and i'm feeling kind of conflicted about these door handles i'm i was so used to looking at them like black and tarnished but um i don't know it just looks weird being white but i also don't know whether i can remove that paint completely i just think it's too far gone like the handles are just too black i can't i can't bring it back to maybe what it would have been <laughs> they're just a bit too old we're gonna go to ikea now and pick up the shelves so that we can go ahead and paint them green yeah and we're gonna pick up our friend tim and he's gonna help us with the kitchen today. As soon as we got home from Ikea, we laid out where we wanted the shelves to go above the stove. So we had two shelves and we had to make sure that we found the beam behind the wall to drill into that instead of through the plaster. Oh! What just happened? Oh! Oh, that's not good. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I hit the jackpot. Woo! <laughs> I can't believe how many holes we put. We decided to wear face masks because we weren't really sure what the wall was made out of, whether it was fibro or not. So we decided it was better to be safe while drilling into the wall. So after we got the placement for the shelves, James went ahead and finished off the trimming in green, Tim painted the door, and I did the trimming underneath the cupboards. and I almost forgot about painting the back of the door, so I had to go around and do that. It's the end of the day, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm really disappointed with the progress that we've made, or lack of progress. All we did was pretty much paint the door and just fix up um, some of the paint job on the trimmings and stuff like that. It's just ridiculous this morning, I was rattling on about how much we were gonna get done, we we're gonna put up the wallpaper, we we're gonna put the countertops on, yeah, but we, we got none of that done. We got absolutely none of that done. What did take a while was trying to add in the holes. <laughs> it was an absolute mess today, trying to get the holes on the beam that's behind this. <laughs> we kept missing <laughs> and we I've puttied up all of these holes. That is a really big thing, being able to have the holes ready before we put the wallpaper on. We've made these markings on the tiles and then it's just directly up where the hole is. So we'll be able to, once we put the wallpaper on, feel over and know where the hole is because the last thing we want is to be putting up the wallpaper and then just drilling holes in because we don't know where we want to place the shelf. We've got all the holes up and we can just go ahead and do the wallpaper. I really wanted to do the wallpaper today, but we didn't get it done. We didn't go to Ikea to get the shelves um, until like one o'clock. Um, and then we got lost in Ikea. If you've ever been to Ikea, you probably know what I'm talking about. But the way they lay out the showroom, it's not like, oh, we can just go out here. They make it like a maze and you're going through around all of these different bins and you can't get out until you go through the whole thing. And that was just driving us mad because all we wanted to do was go in there, find the thing that we wanted, and then go down to the warehouse to get the shelf. But it was such a kerfuffle. It took so long. We were trapped in the stupid place. Anyway, tomorrow morning we're gonna get up early and we're going to put on the wallpaper. Not all of it, but just some of it. I'm, I'm, I'm really nervous to put the wallpaper on because I've never done wallpaper before. I don't have much experience with any sort of renovations really, so I'm just making this up as I go. So once we put the wallpaper up, we'll be able to attach the shelves. So I've got my wooden cabinet there and then two shelves there that I'm painting green to go with the wall. Hopefully we can get through it. So I'll see you then. Good morning. It's the third day for renovating. And um, I have exactly an hour to do things before I'm going out to see some friends. So the plan was to wake up really early and do some wallpaper, 
but I really just don't want to be in the middle of wallpapering and like the glue's drying and I have to go. I don't want to do that. And the wallpaper really frightens me because I don't want to do it wrong. It's really important. I only have a certain amount, which means I can't afford to waste anything. I have to make sure that I do it perfect and that I don't rip it or make any mistakes. So instead of doing the wallpaper, I am going to use this vinyl for the countertops. We'll see how it goes. I've roughly measured out the length of the countertop and I've just left a little bit of excess just in case. Okay, this was not on camera, but I literally just tore a hole in the adhesive. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm not okay. I have to pull this whole thing up. I just want these bubbles to go away. And when I pull it up, more stuff happens. Like, <laughs> the whole thing starts to fall apart. Why is this so difficult? Why? I'm having a second attempt at sticking down the adhesive countertop. I'm so exhausted, I've had a really big day. My feet are killing me, I've done so much walking today. So I'm sitting on my little chair here um, and it's actually making my job a lot easier. Are you ready for a satisfying tape peel? So the plan for today is to stick all of the wallpaper up. So before putting the wallpaper up, I decided to have a quick look online to see whether they had any tips for putting up vintage wallpaper. I kept coming across wheat paste and everyone was talking about putting up wallpaper with wheat paste and I had no idea. I've just bought a whole tub of regular wallpaper glue or wallpaper adhesive and it's saying that we have to put up vintage wallpaper with wheat paste. So um, that's originally how it would have been put up and regular wallpaper glue can eat away at vintage wallpaper. So I'm kind of freaking out here, but I'm gonna do a little test because on the back of the tub, it says that it is safe to use on old wallpaper. On the edge of the wallpaper, there are selvages on either side and this is perforated. So I'm just pulling up some of it and I'm gonna test this out with the wallpaper glue and I'm just gonna see what happens whether it's okay and obviously if it starts to like break down or something, I'll go ahead and make the wheat paste. I don't know whether I mentioned this before, but on the first day of taking out this wallpaper and having a look at it, I accidentally poked a hole in the wallpaper. It's not obvious from the other side, but like this is just how fragile it is and I have to be so careful, like I cannot risk damaging this at all and you know we only have a certain amount so I can't afford to screw it up. So I got out the giant tub of wallpaper glue and a paintbrush and did a little test sample on a scrap piece of wallpaper. I put the glue on the back and stuck it to the wall and then I just needed to wait to let it dry and it felt like the painting was taking forever. There were still little things that we needed to do. The painting was never finished. The little piece of wallpaper dried really quickly and I was pleasantly surprised there was no disintegrating of the paper. So I went ahead and took off the selvages from the wallpaper. So you take off one side and then overlap the next piece over that piece. And obviously since I'd never used wallpaper or had any idea about it, I didn't even consider that you had to match the patterns. But thank goodness I bought enough wallpaper to allow for mistakes. So I went ahead and matched my pieces before putting them on the wall so I knew exactly how much I needed. So because I wasn't using wheat paste for the vintage wallpaper, that would have traditionally been applied onto the actual wallpaper. Because I was using a modern method, I was able to apply the wallpaper glue directly to the wall and then add the wallpaper to that. Yay! High five, babe. Thanks for being my moral support.
I was so sweaty after putting my first roll of wallpaper onto the wall, I had to change into shorts. This was such a stressful process, but there were some heated moments where I was really struggling to put it up and it was slipping, it was starting to tear, and my neck was killing me from looking up. <sighs> uh, my neck! And because the process of tearing away the perforated edge on the wallpaper was so tedious, I just couldn't do it in one go and I had to do it one strip and then put up the piece and then take off another strip and put up the next piece. But in the end, it was so rewarding, it's so beautiful and I'm so happy with the wallpaper we chose. And to finish off the day with something satisfying, I peeled away the blue tape, which is just so fun to do. The next morning I got up nice and early and I started the day with painting the shelves that I got from Ikea. I wanted to paint them green to match the wall but I later found out that the paint didn't really stick to the shelves at all and I ended up just having to remove the paint and just going with the white shelves. Good morning! Okay so today is the final day to finish off the kitchen and um, it's a little bit stressful because we're a little bit unprepared for everything that we need to get done today but we're gonna try. I haven't even done my makeup, we're into it early and we're gonna try and get it all done. Um, I decided the other day that I didn't want to go with the pink countertop, it's just a bit too bright. I was hoping it would be a similar colour to the pink wallpaper up here but it just looks a bit too childish. So I'm going to remove all of the hard work that I did um, and then maybe in the near future we will think about doing the countertops instead of having them white, find a colour that's similar to the wallpaper. But yeah, we're going to put up the cabinet today and we're going to keep that its original timber and then we're going to add in the shelves above the stove. So yeah, and then finishing touches. Oh, and also I forgot, I have another plan to add a little curtain above the window here. So. Yeah, I need to make that. I need to go and buy the fabric and make that today. So, very busy day, and I better get onto it. <laughs> so, because we were prepared and we went ahead and drilled our holes the day before, we knew exactly where we wanted our cabinet to be placed. I'd marked with tape the exact spot that we needed to drill the hole into, so it was pretty straightforward once we were able to line everything up and put the screw into the pre drilled hole. And of course, Mabel and Maud were on the back step, watching intently from outside. They wanted to be a part of the fun too. So once I placed the shelves up, I then started to play around with everything else in the kitchen and working on adding those finishing touches. I did end up buying a stud finder because this particular wall was a little bit tricky. Everywhere I tapped, I couldn't hear a difference. So even the stud finder was picking up that it was just pretty much all electric. So I was kind of freaking out about how in the world am I going to put up a frame or anything on this wall. But I ended up finding some spots and we were able to put up something in the end. One of my favorite things to do is go thrift shopping. So of course I had some little things in this kitchen that I added that were from the thrift store and this cute little spice rack was $8. What a bargain. I also picked up this amazing bread tin for $4 which is something that I've been looking for for so long and I was just so chuffed that I found the perfect tin for such a great price. As another little finishing touch, I got a brown putty to cover the screws on the shelf. And like I mentioned earlier, I didn't like that pink adhesive paper in the end, it was just too bright, so I pulled it all up and we just had the simple white countertops. I also got some amazing pieces from the 1960s, a beautiful old ceramic kettle and a 1960s flip side toaster. I just turned on the kettle to see if it works. And it works! You can hear it whirring away. And, and it's starting to get hot to touch. I'm so excited. I get to use a vintage kettle every day and I get to use a vintage toaster too. What I was saying is that I'm going to add a curtain up here and it is going to be the same pink and green that I have in the kitchen here. And I'm gonna try and do that tonight. And then I'm just going to use Velcro strips to attach it instead of using a curtain rod. I was saying before that the stud finder that we've been using is saying that there's electricity on all of the walls, especially right near here. Like, I don't know, there's, I guess, cause there's a PowerPoint here 
the electricity is running up the side or something I don't know so I don't want to put a curtain rod in I don't want to nail into um, an electrical wire so we're going to just line it with velcro and stick it on and it's gonna be cute so I got out my lovely green and pink material that I picked up from the fabric store and I started measuring it all I think it was approximately between 7 and 9 inches that I wanted the length of the curtain to be. So one was going to be longer than the other, so it's kind of like a little feature layer. I don't even know how I did such a good job on this. It was really late at night, and this is the day before James's family arrived. So I was trying to have the kitchen completely ready for them and to surprise Granny with the new kitchen. I really just made up the whole method for this curtain, so I don't know whether I'm the best person to ask how to do it, but I kind of just hemmed and gathered, and like I said, it was so late and I was so tired. <laughs> I didn't get the curtain completely finished that night, but the kitchen was pretty close to perfect, so we were really excited to see Granny's reaction. Oh, gold. Oh, that's a lovely colour, isn't it? Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, going going through. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> oh, you've oh, my goodness. So, so when I say we spent all week doing... Grandma, this wallpaper here is yeah. genuine 1950s. Yeah. If, you, if you even so much as look at it, it will rip. <laughs> so oh, it's yeah. incredibly delicate, but we yeah. managed to... We managed to get it all up. Cute. Look oh. at look at our toaster. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that yeah. And it works. Yeah, you've done a good job on it. Thank yeah. you, Granny. Not some point, it's a bunch of sharp bit and wire. Very good. <laughs> it makes it look good on your uh, like, do you not show. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But, but they still be fine. Yeah. Yeah, come come out of them. Very good. So while James's family was staying with us, I still had a bit of time to finish off the kitchen. I attached the adhesive velcro onto the window frame and then I finished off gathering my curtains and then attached them. I was so pleased with the final result of the curtain. The green didn't exactly match the wall, but it is still in the same colour scheme, so I'm happy with that. I also picked up a lovely set of hooks from my local vintage market and I wasn't sure where to put them at first but then we decided on putting it on the door because that was the most appropriate place and it looks cute to hang my aprons. Granny had some beautiful paintings in the house and there were two by the same artist so we decided to put them together in the kitchen. So we've had a bit of an issue with the wallpaper and there being a little bit of oil underneath and it is slowly starting to spread up the wallpaper. Um, I don't know how we missed it. Um, I washed the walls with soap and water, um, but obviously it wasn't enough to get away all the oil. So this is what it looks like above here, which is an absolute shame that it's spread up. So the idea with this is I want to put some wallpaper over the top so it can seamlessly look like there's no oil or anything, but I can't just put the wallpaper over the top because this oil is just going to seep through into the new wallpaper that I put on. So I need to create some sort of barrier between this and the new wallpaper. And I thought I might try some of this putty in between. And I tested it out on a scrap bit of wallpaper and there hasn't been any reaction with the wallpaper. So like, you know, there's no oil or anything in it. So that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and put the putty all here and then put some new wallpaper over tomorrow morning crossing my fingers and hoping this works out so in the morning once the putty dried i pretty much did the same method as putting on the rest of the wallpaper and i just made sure to line up the pattern so that it was completely seamless and you didn't even notice there was an extra piece over the top And now, after this excruciatingly long renovating process, the final kitchen reveal is here.
ta-da! I'm so glad the whole process is finished. There were some really enjoyable parts and other parts that were very stressful, but I hope you all enjoyed seeing the whole process and seeing what the kitchen looked like before and after. And I hope you liked it. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a few days for my next video. Bye. Oh yeah. No, I love this. Cause I'm a vintage dog. <laughs> Um, mm, look at that grunty feet. <laughs> feet reveal? Please wash your feet with a bar of soap in your next video. <laughs> You're gonna have to wash them now. No. Um. Oh no, I just pulled off the Velcro.